Welcome back, it's me Adam and you're watching Unlimited Options Investing. Happy New Year's everyone and in this video I want to talk about Nancy Pelosi and her trades that recently came out and she invests just like we do here at Unlimited Options Investing where she buys long-term dated options that are deep in the money but aren't as exposed to losing a lot of extrinsic value if you buy them at the money or out the money. They're also less capital intensive than buying shares upright, but you do have to pay attention to volatility, extrinsic value, time value. There's a lot more factors that go into it. It does take a lot more time to learn, but at the same time, it's so lucrative. You could blow up your account, but at the same time, if you do learn it properly, you can really build your account and scale it over the long term. So we'll look at our trades, the options. We'll look at the expirations and the strike prices, as well as the stocks themselves. We'll take a look at the charts. If this is your first time stumbling upon the channel, Welcome aboard and hit that subscribe button here at Unlimited Options Investing. We talk everything from stocks, crypto, options, ETFs, and we're investing for the long term. As always, smash that like button and let's get started. All right, so we're going to start off with this video that I just watched right before I started recording. So we'll give that a listen. So now you're able to track what these lawmakers are buying and selling because by law, they have to be transparent about what they're doing with these trades, I think within 45 days of, of the trade actually clearing. Um, what have you found? Does the market move based on congressional disclosures at all? Yeah, it's funny. So the Stock Act is kind of what you were referring to, where any lawmaker, when they make a trade, they have 45 days to disclose that trade. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has been the one that the retail community has been following specifically, but a lot of other lawmakers do it, and we plan to add more. The reason why Nancy, though, became so popular, or Speaker Pelosi, excuse me, became so popular was because every trade she was making inevitably turned out to be such a long-term winner. Um, it started early in 2020 with CrowdStrike, and then she bought Tesla, and then there were some laws passed that were uh, pro for the EV market. Um, she bought Google. And then the, the laws came out that they weren't going to go after big tech. And then she just recently uh, bought NVIDIA. And we've been tracking these, these performances. And every single stock she's bought in the last two years have gone up significantly, um, albeit the entire market has gone up significantly. But these are very, very risky bets, too, because she's buying leap options as opposed to just stock. So... I think we, we haven't been able to run the, the exact numbers of how much her performance is up over the last two years, but every single stock she has bought has been up around 20 to 30% since her initial investment. So you us know, retail guys, it's like, hey, let's follow them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when it comes to lawmakers, though, I mean, they they are privy to certain information that could be market moving. I have to think they're always walking a fine line of possible insider trading. Um, are you, do you see a theme here? And, and are you on the lookout for things like that, that maybe, you know, some of these trades seem a little suspicious in, the, in their timing? Yeah. And I, 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 it's pretty obvious that we've all been watching this. I think it started with um, a couple of Congress uh, men and women during COVID where they had, quote unquote, inside information. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. And then they sold stock before COVID became a thing. Um, it's not out of the question to think that they may necessarily know something that the retail investing community doesn't. And if they're the ones passing the laws, it's probably smart to keep up and see what they're buying. Um, and the Nancy Pelosi trades that her husband has made kind of back that theory up where th with Tesla and the EV industry or Google and big tech, uh, Microsoft with a, with a Jedi contract, I believe from back in uh, earlier this year. It's not out of the ordinary, and it's not the, the craziest theory to think. Uh, we don't think that they do, but it's something that we have made sure to keep an eye on. Before we let you go, I'm curious how you make money. Are you charging people who come to the platform? Is it through advertising? All right, so that's that. That is why people like following her trades, uh, because whenever she seems to buy something, it tends to do very well. Not much later, which is convenient because... Uh, options are time sensitive. They are bullish bets. All right, going to Market Watch. Pelosi's husband bought Google Disney call options that would pay off if bull market continues. Pelosi, owner and operator of a San Francisco based real estate and venture capital investment and consulting firm, purchased between $500,000 and $1 million in call options and Alphabet stock with a strike price of $2,000 and an expiration date of September 16, 2022. 
about 30% below the closing price of the stock on December 17, 2021. The close as of December 31st was 2897 If we take a look at the options and go to September 16th, 2022, and we scroll down to the $2,000 call option, each contract going for $950 when you multiply that by 100 yeah, yep, each contract is going to cost $95,000. And the delta of that being 0.97, so it's as if she has 97 shares multiplied by 2,900 roughly, which is the stock price. So $95,000 for $281,000 worth of actual value. And remember, her husband bought between $500,000 and a million dollars worth of options, meaning if they even hold 10 contracts, it's as if they're holding $3 million worth of stock. He bought between $250,000 and $500,000 in call options in Micron shares with a strike price of $50 and an identical expiration date about 45% below the closing price on December 21st, the day of the transaction. So we go over here and we search MU for Micron. Closing on December 31st at $93 and the strike price was $50. So we go to options. We go to September 16th, 2022 and we scroll down to $50. Each contract costing $44.15. Multiply by 100 each contract costs about 4415 And he bought between 250000 and half a million. The next one being between 600000 and $1.25 million in call options in Salesforce with a strike price of $210 with an expiration date of January 20th, 2023. About 15% below the stock's closing price of 247 on the day of the transaction on December 20th. And I actually have all of my Option calls also expiring on the same date, which is cool to me because I'm playing the same game that these people are as well. So if we take a look at Salesforce, the ticker symbol for that is CRM. The closing price of December 31st would be $254. So they have the strike price of 210 for January 20th, 2023. So if we go down to that strike price and then let's go... So $61 per contract, essentially $6,100. Between 600,000 and 1.25 million, so, so anywhere from 100 to 200 contracts. Unbelievable. He bought between $100,000 and $250,000 in call options in Walt Disney shares with a strike price of 130 and an expiration date of September 16th, 2022, roughly 13% below the stock's closing price of $148.76 on the day of the transaction, December 17th. And this is actually kind of close to the one that I hold right now. So I also hold a Disney call option, mine being that January 2023. And I think my strike price right now is 140 whereas Pelosi's is deeper in the money, but whose expiration is nearer than mine. We look at the 130 call. So you're looking at 3070 per contract and anywhere from $100,000 to $250,000 that he purchased. And in my opinion, Google, Micron, Salesforce, Walt Disney, these are, these are pretty good bullish bets. These are good companies. I mean, me personally, I'm in Google and Disney. Micron was one. Uh, I just don't know enough about it. Same thing with Salesforce. I know that they do, they're they real companies. They do things. Uh, I don't know how good their financials or their fundamentals are or their prospects. I just haven't done enough research to be comfortable buying them. Whereas with Google, we all know Google and how they're just a growth monster and how it'll most likely be higher than it is right now in the next, what, nine months. And same thing with Disney. This one's just been beaten down so much. And with a potential recovery in 2022, again, what does Nancy Pelosi know that we don't? So first, we're looking at Google stock. We often look at this one on the channel. This one is just a beast whenever it is near its 50 EMA. It is just a buy because it just grinds up higher, continuing to make higher lows and higher highs. At least it's been doing that forever. And even taking a look at Google on the weekly, whenever it's at its 20 EMA, it just bounces right off. Until we break that trend, it looks like we're going to continue doing the same thing. The 20 EMA in this case on the weekly being at around 2825. The next stock, Micron, so this is on the weekly, and on the weekly, this is actually a pretty ugly uh, candle. Testing that resistance at about $95, getting rejected, creating a shooting star or a pin bar candle, where if we open near where we closed last week and continue making lower lows, that could confirm uh, the shooting star candle, which, which could trigger more selling, which triggers more selling, and we could see some kind of a pullback, especially as we've gone over the past couple of months from $66 all the way up to the 90s. Looking at Salesforce, so this one actually has been a falling knife ever since the middle of November, I think maybe it could have been earnings, where we were as high as $310 and we've fallen all the way down to 50 EMA on the weekly, which has often been a pretty good area. Not to mention that looks like where Pelosi actually bought around December 20, December 17th. He is definitely watching unlimited options investing and looking at the technical analysis that we're doing. 
I actually really like that buy, especially at that price in terms of uh, on the technical charts. And lastly, taking a look at Disney, again, this one over the last six months has just been going down. We reached a peak of about $202 earlier this past March. Ever since then, it's just been a downtrend, which we could draw over here. And we could potentially also draw a line connecting these bottoms over here. So let's see in 2022 if we can continue grinding up higher. And if these two trend lines end up meeting later on in the year, if we haven't already, we'd break up higher or break up lower uh, from either one of these trends. But anything can happen in the price action at any point before these trend lines decide to meet. All right, and that's the end of my video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, let me know in the comments below, are you gonna be buying any of these same companies that Nancy Pelosi just recently bought? What do you think of her bullish bets and her options calls? What does she know that we don't? Let me know in the comments below. As always, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.